Hey everyone, welcome to a virtual day. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna work through two in-class problems and I'm gonna break them up into two different videos so you can kinda do one problem and you can deal with the other one as two separate things. Um, as you're working through the problem, we're gonna go through and I'm gonna ask you to hit pause um, and then try to solve it and then unpause and then we'll kinda get you going is kinda the whole you know, in classes, say, okay, now you try it on your own. Well, now you get to try it on your own. So please hit pause when I say hit pause, and then we'll go through and we'll kind of, I'll try to edit out some of the things that don't need, you don't need to see all my steps. So we'll try to keep these videos a little bit shorter, but that's kind of the process we're going to be trying here. So the problems we're going to go through are off your in-class problems worksheet. So if you don't have your in-class problems out, please pause this and find your worksheet called in-class problems. The other opportunity or the other option um, is you can go to the agenda for in class in person um, from Wednesday slash Thursday in Canvas and there's a PDF a version of it. Also, I'm going to have the problem on the screen. So if you hit pause, you could also just work through this on a piece of notebook paper. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the in-class problem. So those are kind of some options for you. But if you want to have the copy in front of you, you should probably spend some time and dig that out quick. So let's assume that you have it out and we're going to move on. So we're going to work on in-class problem number three um, from that worksheet. So as we're working through these problem types, we're using Fab Five equations. So just a quick reminder of a Fab Five problem. Um, you're going to figure out whether it's in the X column or if it's in the Y column. And depending upon whether it's in the X, like is moving left and right, then this is the column we make. If it's moving up and down, then we're going to make this. We haven't done any up and downs left yet. We're just doing left and right. So we're talking Delta X column right now. So you're going to go through. You are going to be looking for key information numbers that have units and then based upon those units we can then fill in these appropriately then you're going to go through and you're going to put a question mark and whichever one of these is what the question is asking you to solve for then cross off the variable that we don't know and don't care about then based upon if we cross off like final velocity then we're going to use the equation that doesn't have a final velocity in it so we use equation number three write the equation down equation number three write it in the full form before you do any substitution put your own numbers in solve algebraically so that's kind of the process again so how do we know what our units are well these are the units of the different numbers so if you see something this is meters per second squared that's an acceleration if it's meters per second it's one of the three types of velocities you just got to figure out which one if it's a meters it's either delta x or delta y is it up and down or left and right then time is seconds. So these are kind of how do we know what question we're solving for? Um, these are these are the questions that would we put a question mark next to one of these variables. So problem number three: a car with an initial velocity of 6.5 meters per second accelerates at a uniform rate of 0 0.92 meters per second squared for 3.6 seconds. Find the final velocity and the displacement of the car during this time. Okay. Now I'm going to say for the time being let's pretend that that question isn't there let's just find the final velocity first okay let's kind of go through that process so now what i want you to do is i'm going to ask you to hit pause um, while you're paused i'm going to ask you to go through circle numbers and um, figure out what variables they're going to go with make your list of variables and once you determine what is it a delta x column is it a delta y column then based upon your units put those numbers in the appropriate column and then unpause it and we will kind of come back together all right so i'm going to kind of walk you through this process um kind of as i do it so i'm looking for hey look this says velocity of 6.5 meters per second accelerates at a uniform rate accelerates at 9.2 meters per second squared meters per second squared is a good indicator and then we also have our 3.6 seconds so we're talking about a car so because this is a car it's a delta x it's delta x v i v f a and t okay so that's my list of variables then we go through and we identify meters per second well that's a velocity and we have to figure out which one it gives us initial velocity, but you have to kind of go through and sometimes determine that on your own. So we'd put 6.5 meters per second there. And then it says accelerates at 
0.92 meters per second squared. So my acceleration is 0.92 meters per second squared. And then my last thing is it has an S that is for seconds. So we have 3.6 seconds. And you can say, well, how did I know that those are? Well, remember on the back side of that yellow half sheet, we have terms like that that are going to be helpful for us. Okay, those are the units. So based upon those units, we can pull those numbers and we can figure out what column to put it in. So the question, the initial question that is being asked is what is the final velocity? So that's where our question mark goes is we are trying to determine what our final velocity is. At this point, I'm going to say we don't know delta x and we don't care about delta x. So then how do we know which equation we're going to use? Well, we go through and we make our list and depending upon our list, that's going to help us figure out which variable or which equation we're going to use. So we have no delta x and we don't care about delta x. So when we go and look at our equations, we are looking for the equation that does not have a delta x in it. We are going to use equation number two. So hopefully you've you kind of recognize that equation number two. So then what we want to do is we want to go through and we want to use equation number two. So notice how I'm going to rewrite it in exactly the same format that it is listed on your sheet, right? So there's our original equation. Now we plug in our numbers and we solve. Go ahead and hit pause. Try to solve it on your own and then unpause it when you have it figured out. All right, I'm, again, I'm going to kind of walk you through this math. I know you guys are all pretty good with your algebra. Um, we're just going to kind of walk through this one step by step. So my final velocity, that's our unknown. We're going to keep that as VF. That's the unknown variable we're solving for. We're solving for VF. My initial velocity is 6.5, and we're going to add that to our acceleration, which is 0 0.92, times our time of 3.6 seconds. Okay. Now, when we go through, remember order of operations, when we go through, we have to do the multiplication part first. We have to go 0 0.92 times 3.6. And then when we take that number, we add it to 6.5. Okay, so that's the process we have to do. Multiplication, division, then we go through and we do the addition second. Okay, so we have to go through and we have to say 0 0.92 times 3.6 is 3.312. So we just want to go and we want to keep this VF is equal to 6.5 plus 3.312. Do not round anything until your final answer. Do not round anything until your final answer. Then we take that number and we add our 6.5 to it. And my final velocity is equal to 9.812 meters per second. That's my final answer, okay? That's the answer that was listed there. Again, rounding to two decimal points is perfectly acceptable. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to, oh, it didn't actually work, let me try that again. Okay, so we can then hopefully get rid of that. Okay, so now that we have gone through and we have determined question number one, the idea is we can go through and we can now solve for what's the displacement. So the best approach, and let me repeat this, the best approach, the one that's going to give you the best answer is to go through and look at this list of equations, and now what we're doing is we're solving for this one. We're solving for delta x. We're solving for displacement. The best choice is to pretend, if at all possible, to pretend like we don't know the final velocity. And the reason is this number down here may be a rounded number. And if we use a rounded number to then make uh, another calculation, our number gets even more rounded. So best practice, I'm going to say this again, best practice, it's okay to do it the other way. I will often try to avoid that if at all possible. The best practice would be to use the equation that does not have a final velocity in it. 
Okay, so if we go through and say, hey, what equation doesn't have a final velocity in it, we would go through and say, hey, look, equation number three doesn't have a final velocity. That's going to be the best choice, best practice. Okay, so then equation number three, delta x is equal to vi times t plus one half a t squared. That is my original equation that I'm going to go and try to plug some numbers into. Okay, so what numbers do we have? Well, delta x is our unknown. That's what we're solving for. My initial velocity is 6.5. The time is 3.6. And I'm going to run out of room. So I'm going to say plus, and then I'm just going to kind of bring this over, 1 half times our acceleration of 0 0.92 times our time of 3.6 and then we square that, okay? And if we go through and we do this, we should come up with our final answer. Again, we're simply doing algebra at this point. So we are going to go 3.6 squared times 0.92 times 0.5. And that's going to give us a value. Now, again, we do not round any number until the absolute end. So we're going to go delta x is equal to, and I just did this last part on a calculator. So this part is 5.9616. And now what I still have to do is I haven't done that part yet. So now we can go 6.5 times 3.6. And this part is equal to 23.4. We have to do the multiplication first. So now, once we have our multiplication taken care of, I can go and I can add my two numbers together, again, not rounding until the very end. And what we get is we get a delta x, a final displacement of 29.3616 meters, which we could then round to 29.36 meters. Now, if you used this number, in equation number, say, 2, um, or equation number 4, or equation number 5, you're going to get a pretty good number, a pretty close number. Now, what sometimes happens is if you were to say, well, I only have 9.8 and pretend you rounded here, you did not use the full number, and there's going to be some rounding issues. So you won't get 29.36. You're going to get pretty darn close. The best practice would be to pretend like you don't. So that's kind of how you approach problem number 3. Uh, I'm going to go through problem number four um, one more time, and then I would suggest you work on your um, kind of work through these these constant acceleration problems uh, on your own.